can't see nothing like this. Maybe I need a boom. A boom! Oh, shit. Yeah. That a boom! Yeah. What am I? Vincent Price? Camera test, 18 million. Are you recording now? Oh man, I did that whole spiel all over again and it didn't record. Well, I guess third time's the charm, as they say. So I've been futzing around all day with camera setups, testing, testing mics, testing this, testing that. This place is a damn mess. It's a shambles. But it's Thursday and uh, I'm going to re-record -re this now for the third time. Are you even recording? Let me just make sure you're recording. Are you recording? Okay, I had to be. I had to check because I just redid this whole spiel, and I found out it didn't record. And that sucked. But that's the life of a YouTuber, I guess. Messed around with lights. I think this light works a lot better. I got a light bouncing off the ceiling. For a while, I had these overhead lights on, but then it puts a light right down straight on your head, which looks bad. And then I've got a light on the camera now, big glaring light, soft kind of pink light to make me look much more youthful and elegant. Uh, so what's going on besides the fact there's a huge mess? Well, so, hey, I finished the design. Finished the design, design is finished. The fact that I signed it indicates that I'm not gonna touch it again. Next thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna transfer the design to my silk. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can do what's called a prick and pounce where you basically poke a lot of holes in it and you use some like white chalk or something. I don't wanna mess with that. That seems very complicated to me. One, one thing you can also do, which I would love to do at some point, but I do not have the skills to do it right now, is you can actually silk screen these. You could basically do a big silk screen of this, silk screen it onto your, onto your material, and then embroider that, and then you just rinse out the paint, which I think would be really cool too. But can't do that, so ain't gonna do it. So the way I'm gonna transfer the design is I'm gonna use this. It is wash away stabilizer. It's Pellon Wash and Go or something like that. And it's not fusible, so I'll have to use spray based, uh, like a quilter spray base, to put it onto the silk. And I will take my little pen and I, because it's very, you know, I can see through it and I will just do my tracing onto here and then I'll just spray baste it onto the silk and then I will use, then I will either, so there's two, two ways I could go. I could either do the embroidery right over the, the stabilizer, which would actually probably be a good idea because it would protect the silk from the yuckiness of my hands. On the other hand, it wouldn't be probably, maybe not as interesting to watch me do it on YouTube on the other hand, it might actually be cool because I could do all the stitches and then like there'd be this grand reveal. Once I rinsed away the stabilizer, you'd see the whole thing in its glory. Maybe I'll do that. Anyway, that's, that's down the road. I gotta do some tests first. So what I think I'm gonna do is this kind of design motif in the center here. It's small and it's manageable. So I'm going to trace this little guy out a couple times onto this, this little bit of stabilizer that I have. And then I'm going to take a couple pieces. I've got tons of black silk. So I'm going to take a couple pieces of black silk, put them in a hoop, um, and just do some test embroidery. I'm also going to test a couple different uh, backings on this. So I've used, I have some uh, fusible featherweight interfacing somewhere and it's in charcoal so you won't be able to see it through the silk 
This you just fuse on, it's a fusible featherweight, Pellon again, the name that means quality, and you iron this. The only thing I don't like, what I don't like about stuff like this is I do try to work only in natural fibers. I try to use silk and wool and, you know, and I mean, whatever, it's a foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds, as they say. I'm gonna try that one, I'm gonna give it a test, because I've used it before, I know how it works. This is a new thing I got over at Mill Ends, the best store in the world, one of the best stores in the world. I haven't talked about Scrap PDX yet. They're also one of the best stores in the world. I'm gonna take you guys, I think I'm gonna take you guys on a tour of all the cool places in Portland for craft supplies. Anyway, this is 100% cotton, and it is a, um, almost like a mesh. It's an it's a inner lining, like, a, like you'd put in cuffs, right? like a tailor's, tailor's lining. And it's 100% cotton, and I think this also, once you rinsed it, I think the size would come out and it would probably be softer. That's what I'm gonna do tests. I'm gonna test, I'm gonna do a couple of these. I'm gonna test both those options. I'm gonna do some test stitching so I can see what kind of stitches I wanna use. Then I'll be able, once I've got that done, I'll be able to actually test the wash away and you know rinse away the stabilizer and kind of see make sure it all goes the way I want it to go, make, see how the, um, how the lining that I'm gonna use holds up after rinsing and so forth. So at that point, I will then, once I have that information under my belt, I will be able to go forth and do the whole thing. Anyway, and that I will need, um, I have a big old, well, I don't have, there is in my family a big old quilt frame, you know, for quilt hand quilting, my mom's. My mom is also a crafter, and so is little Boo. Oh, we have family of crafters. So that's out in storage. I need to go get that. I'm gonna need that. Uh, damn GoPro's yelling at me again. You always need to be in the shot. I'm talking to Sony right now, do you mind? Like, what are you beeping about? I got you on the charge, that's all. You know what it is, it's because I said GoPro, isn't it? GoPro, GoPro. See, I think I have you on voice command or something. That's what's going on. Hmm. Whatever. So I need to go out to storage and get that quilt frame because this thing's going to need a big frame. For these little test samples I'm going to do, use hoops. Ah, I got to clean up. Man, I have got to clean up. This place is an absolute scandal. Absolute scandal. But I do think I like the way my lights look right now. Um, hopefully, I like the way this sounds. And I got the hiccups. So tomorrow I will also pop this open and we will see where I'm at then. And just like that, studio is clean again. And I'm in different clothes. It's Friday. We're gonna get to sketching. And uh, that's all I had to say about that. We're gonna sketch this out, get it onto some silk and do some uh, test embroideries.
it is Saturday. I am on my way to a wedding. As you can tell from my festive attire, I'm an old goth and I only wear black. As you can see from this shot that I will insert here from the Osmo, I did get some stitching done yesterday. I've learned a couple things. Number one, I mentioned that I did two test samples. So here's one. I got one on the on the frame over there. This is the one, the, the one I started stitching on is the one that has the, the kind of the mesh inner lining. I like it a lot. I think it's gonna be just fine. Um, so I'm probably just gonna stitch up this one and then go ahead and uh, take it out, rinse out the stabilizer, see how it all works. Um, given that this is supposed to be a maker video, I should probably speak a little bit about what I did. I think I talked about how I sewed these on down here with uh, just, you know, these are just pieces of um, muslin that I stitched on the end, just using regular kind of basting stitches on the sewing machine. And then I stitched this twill tape along the side. Um, and again, I just use the sewing machine. Some people do it by hand, but I do it this way. It makes it nice and even for the stretch. And then um, there's a lot of different ways you can stretch out sideways, laterally as it were. I use the old tried and true standby safety pins and rubber bands from Harbor Freight, which sometimes break and sometimes you have to replace them, but it keeps it just about fine. So I started, as I mentioned, I like sparkly and it's always nice to start with sparkly. What I'm doing here is just a regular couching stitch. Um, basically you just take the thread or you take this sparkly stuff and then you use a thinner thread, which I have around here somewhere. I'm using this, the soft and strong two ply new metallics, which I think I got at, uh, at Scrap PDX. It's really pretty and it kind of matches the color. And then you just basically lay the lay down this, lay down the, the main thread or the main kind of ribbony material, sparkly material, and then you use a, a stitch to go over it. It's very easy. It's not really so much a, a foundational embroidery, well, I mean, it's a foundational embroidery stitch, but it is, it's more about um, embellishment, I would say, than about actually embroidery and doing anything too fancy. So to take with me to the wedding, I've packed myself a little uh, stitchery bag. I've got my, I've got a couple Judith Baker Montano books. My, she's just absolutely fantastic. I'm think, I'm going through and thinking about what stitches I want to use. And she's got a book called Elegant Stitches and the Crazy Quilt Handbook that are kind of my go-tos. Um, when I need to kind of think through and get some inspiration. So I'm going to take those with me if I have some downtime. It's an all day wedding. We're driving way down south to like Salem or something. My friend is doing the photography. So I've got my hoop. I've got my scissors and my needles and everything. Just take it with me. And then uh, when I need a break, I'll go find myself a quiet corner to go look at stitches and do some sewing and all of that. Then tomorrow is Sunday which usually follows Saturday, as I've found. And I think tomorrow I'm going to try to continue working on this sample or this test, because it would be really cool for this video if I could actually have the whole thing stitched uh, and do the, do the reveal by the end of this video. And then for the next video, we could move on to the main project. Wouldn't that be cool? So anyway, so today, test stitches. Tomorrow, Sunday, see if you can finish stitching this thing and do it in time lapse. Which shouldn't be too hard because the stitching I've done so far, all of this, I would say probably took me about two hours, right? And a lot of that is kind of having to go slower um, because obviously I'm trying to film while I stitch so it's not in the position I'm used to. So that kind of sucks, but I'll get used to it, I'm sure. Um, but once I figure out, I mean, obviously all the words here are gonna be red, so that outside board is gonna be red. Then I need a secondary color for this, and then I need a color that I wanna use for the circle, and a color for that, and maybe a color for those, uh, those uh, vertical elements. Probably gonna do a spangle in the center. Kind of like that test piece I did that I showed. Gotta figure out, maybe some beading along here would be pretty, actually, some of that beading like I did with the, um, that test piece. It's gonna look kind of like an eyeball, it's gonna be really neat. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I wanna do just outlines or if I wanna try doing fills or satins. I don't, I don't like satins, satins are kind of hard to make look good. I think I'll just stick with outlining for this, um, because A, I can get it done, and B, I wanna get it done and have for the video. So anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm kind of just trying to keep, um, keep up with my goal of recording every day, uh, continuing to get better and continuing to get better at my technology and all that. I still think my light is a little bit dark, but you know, I wonder if I do wonder if I turn this off. 
And I think he was like, well, maybe it is. It might be a contrast. Like, look at that. It's so much bright. It seems like it's brightened up. So I think maybe what's happening is the camera is kind of compensating. Yes, the camera is compensating. I can see that. That's interesting. So you're saying, if I turn you off, I get better light. But then the problem is, I don't have light on my workpiece. Well, ain't that a conundrum? What shall I do? Darker. Less dark. Hmm. We'll see. Because I want to be able to go under the Osmo and show things. Maybe I could turn the light? I don't know. Anyway. Well, that's enough for today. I got it done. Got my little video done for today. Wait, how do you keep it right? Is that? All right, it is Sunday, and I am stitching. It's a beautiful day out there, and I feel like I should go out and get a walk or something instead of sitting here, drink Rainier, and stitch. But I guess life could be worse. I also realize the more Rainier I drink, the worse my stitches probably get. So, anyway, um, let's see. Well, I got the outlining done on the test piece. I'm very happy with it. I like the sparkly. You know, always start with the sparkly. That's what they say. Always start with the sparkly. Now, I have run into a problem. Because I'm thinking, definitely, I will probably want to keep the sparkly in the final piece when I get to it. <coughs> Excuse me. But look how much I have left. Here, I'll put it under the Osmo so you can see. Hopefully the Osmo will see. Look at that. I don't even know where I got this. I probably got it at Scrap PDX for like 59 cents. So I'm sure I can get more of it. But I'm going to maybe need to get more of that, but I'll probably have enough. Um, so what I figure I'm going to do today, it's like 4.13 p.m. And I want to get this thing stitched. I want to finish the test today. So that's, that's powering through. I got to power through. And what I'm going to work on, actually, I, I have been doing some test stitches. Um, and one of the things I always do when I'm working on a project like this is I, I audition stitches. I do sample stitches and all that so that I can get a feeling. I don't want to just dive right into my piece. Um, so I usually, as I think I said, I got one of these little guys. I did some sample stitches. So I'll put this under the Osmo here. So this right here, I really like. It's a feather stitch. And uh, I'm, I'm going to call it, for the purposes of uh, clickbait, I'm going to put it in the title and call it the impossible stitch. It's not impossible. It's not really that. I mean, I was going to say it's not really that hard. It is pretty hard. Um, it's just kind of annoying. You have three different, so I've got three different colors of thread. They're all kind of woven together, and you just have to keep them from getting all tangled up and the tension becomes a problem. So what I'm gonna do is put the Osmo on time-lapse, stitch up the rest of this thing today. I may actually, I probably should, since I am supposed to be trying to be a maker or like instruct, uh, instructional in some way. Hold on, let me have another sip of beer. Maybe that'll make me more coherent. I should probably show you how I'm going to do this impossible stitch, which, as I say, is not that impossible. It's just kind of impossible, slightly impossible, marginally impossible. Uh, I'm going to do the impossible stitch around here because because he, I really like the fact that this right here kind of looks like an eyeball. I think that's cool. So I want that to kind of look like veins around the eyeball. And then I think I'm just kind of thinking through my color palette and all that probably definitely 100% going to put a big red sequin right in the middle. And then in using my um, my stitch, my audition thing here, I really like this chartreuse. I'm thinking, I don't like red and green together generally because it looks too much like Christmas. Darn it. Quit hitting the table. Dark red and chartreuse look kind of cool together. Um, the other thing I've done is I have this whole... I've been looking at palettes of things. I've got out a bunch of embroidery threads. 
I got my reds that kind of go with this. I think those are going to be good. And then I got some blues that are kind of like Tiffany blues. I kind of like those, but I don't know if they really go with that cerulean. Anyway, this is how I tend to do colors. Mostly I dive in with one thing that I really like, like that red sparkly crap. And then I try to figure it out from there. And anyway, this is just the test. But the cool thing is, if I can get this thing stitched up today, oh, sorry, sequin, there you go, go back in the middle. I am, I am OCD after all. Um, if I can get this stitched up today, then tomorrow, Monday, I could actually get it, get the water, water stabilizer, water soluble stabilizer soaked off. And actually have something to show for this video. Man, I'm just the YouTuberest YouTuber that ever YouTubed. I'm also on TikTok. I didn't think I was going to be, but I am. Let's see. What else did I want to say? I wanted to pop this open for some reason. I don't know why. I'm three rain ears in. It's Sunday afternoon. I should probably just take a nap or go for a walk. But I should keep stitching. Stitching is life. Stitching is great. Oh, five minutes. Wow, that was five minutes wasted. Five minutes of your life you'll never get back, humble viewer. Maybe I should probably keep Osmo recording and show you how to do the impossible stitch, which is not impossible. But for the purposes of clickbait, I'm calling it the impossible stitch. Stay tuned for that. I'm going to show you how to do the impossible stitch. Now it's time for the impossible stitch. All right. So as I mentioned, and then I'm going to time lapse it. Let me get my three needles. I'm going to have to have three needles for this because basically this is a feather stitch with three different embroidery thread colors. It has this ombre look and it's gorgeous. So, got my light pink. Let me make sure. I got light pink. I got a medium pink. And I got a red. Do I like that red? I'm not sure I like that red. I feel like that red is a little too tomato. That's a bit nicer. But then does it go with that medium pink? See, this is this is the this is the ever-loving conundrum that you always got to face. So, let me see. Let me just audition I love that term. Let me audition a slightly different pink. Nah, I like that pink. Whatever. This is a test. I don't care. I mean, I do care. Of course I care. But I care, but I also relinquish attachment to the outcome. All right. So, God damn it, Mary, don't hit the camera. Okay, so light pink. Let's get the light pink threaded up. Oh, boy. Here we go. Three rain ears in. See if we can do the, oh fuck, yeah, that's great. I'm gonna do the impossible stitch, three rain ears in. Okay, third pink. All right, watch this go down. You're gonna love this. That's pretty exciting. Now I've done this impossible, quote unquote, impossible stitch. I did this on the hoop, which was less impossible on the hoop, slightly. Oh crap, I gotta do something, I forgot. Okay, first of all, I gotta get rid of this sequin. Go away sequin. Um, because on the hoop, I could turn it around. And on this thing, I'm very restricted. Hold on. All right, so here's what I just realized as I was putting all my needles into their assigned spots. I need to have one of the things you will realize is when you're doing test stitching, as I have done here, uh, it will teach you things about what you need to do for like um, reference lines. So for this, I'm going to have to have at least two additional reference lines. So a stitch marker will assist me in this enterprise. I'm looking at this guy and I'm going to need a design line on the inside and a design line on the outside. So using my stitch marker, let us go forth and prosper. Remember, 
all of this is going to get washed away in the sins of my youth. Now I got my design lines. Yay me. Keep drinking beer. Okay, so here's what we gonna do. We're gonna start with our pink thread. And we'll put a knot in it. Now, what I'm gonna do, if I can, I'm gonna start all the way up here and make a nice long tail because when it's a nice long tail, that means I have enough thread that I can go back and uh, tie it off when I want to. So we're going to start with the lightest thread on the inside. Let's do this. Let's just dive right in, shall we? All right, so we're gonna go here and let's see. Are we just gonna follow? Yeah, let's follow the angle. Why don't we just follow the angle? Okay, so let's just leave that up. Now we have the second thread, medium pink. This is where it gets real challenging. And I've only done this in the hoop, so we'll see if this actually works out in the frame as well as I'm hoping it will. Okay, so come down here. Bada bing bada boom. Now, as you will see as we kind of progress with this, thread management is the key. So let's see, how big do we want to make this stitch? Well, let's make it about the width of the design lines. So what I do is I leave the needle sticking up because here's where that gets real tricky. This thread is gonna come down. And you need something to keep that thread from going askew. So I'm gonna take this thread and put the pink thread, and I hope this is all coming across on camera and the brilliance and genius that it is. Because the problem that you're gonna run into with this particular ridiculousness is all your thread underneath is going to want to get really messed up and tangled. And then you pull this guy, boom, let's see. Oh, that's looking beautiful. All right, stitch number one is done. You can give this guy a little tug just to make sure he, he she, they are tight enough. And then we're going to put this guy right in the middle. And then it's time for the red favorite color in the whole world. Maybe I should use some black in this somewhere. I don't know. There's going to be plenty of black. It's black. It's a black canvas. All right, so this red, take a look down there. Where are, where are you? You're up there. Okay. Boy, this is fun. Okay, here comes the red all the way down here. Now, this red is going to come this is an impossible stitch, I tell you what. It's so clickbait. Okay, so we're gonna hold this needle and we're gonna pull this thread like so. Then we're gonna take this thread and then we're also going to bring it up and over. Again, thread management. Thread management. Keeping everything as easy and peasy and lemon squeezy as possible. Then we pull the red and we come here. And then we go back to our middle grade, our mid-grade pink. And we bring said thread back. And we come and we figure out where we want that needle to come. That seems mostly right there, I think. We keep that needle there and we pull through the red. Wow, that is the impossible stitch, my friends. And we're gonna do that all the way around. 
Oh, damn, that's good rain here. Um, me, 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 me. Let me do one more. Oh, shh. Oh, no, that's good. I was afraid for a second that I had everything all janked up. Let me do three more of these just to prove that I can. Let's see, pull you through. We've got a bing bada boom. I should do that. We bring a red up here to make sure, as I said, red management. And then we're going to come back to, then you kind of, you're looking at where your last stitch was. So this one's going to go right about here. And then we go back to our light pink. See, I told you it wasn't impossible. It's just slightly challenging, especially after you've had some beer. Okay, let's see. Oh, crud. Come on, dude. Oh man, I probably ruined the Osmo shot. Oh well. Okay, so let's see, right? Eh, right about here. Yeah, looks good. Okay, then this needle goes down. Uh-oh, wrong one. Sorry. That one stays there. This one goes down. It's kind of hard when you're not looking at the back to try to fix mother fudger. Okay. Dude. Ooh, you piss me off now. Pink, light pink, light pink. I choose you. Okay, light pink, you go back here. I'm trying to teach people stuff. I'm trying to be a good influence to the maker community. Okay, see, and that's, this is one of the problems you're gonna run into. You're trying to pull, especially if you're not looking at the back, like I'm not able to do because I'm, uh, yeah, freaking cameras everywhere. Um but you'll end up pulling two threads at once. That's why I do this whole thread management hoo-ha. Okay, so we know that the medium pink needs to come back. Oh, this needs to go here. The medium pink needs to come back over the frame. Thread management is important. Okay, so now the pink, light pink, is gonna come up. There we go, light pink. Oh, aren't you looking lovely? And so, as I mentioned, this is where tension gets to be an issue. And I mentioned tension because usually when you do a feather stitch like this, the thread provides its own tension because it's pulling itself. But in this case, uh, I'm not even gonna show, well, I suppose I could show you what happens if you, uh, I, uh, do I dare? I'm scared, I'm very scared. If I pull one too much, that's what's gonna happen. Something like that, something janky is gonna happen. If I pull the red one, that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna look all horrible. So what we want to do, and I'll try to make it look nice again because I do like to make things look nice. You got to, that's why I do the thread management, is you got to keep the tension really carefully even on all of these. So let's put the pink, I'm guessing it's kind of a 90 degree angle. I'm not sure if that's what I've been following to this point, but I suppose going forward I should. Um, okay, so let's get our medium pink from off the bench. And we come up here and we find the reasonably good spot kind of in the middle of those two design lines that is about the right length. And again, you could be super precise with this if you wanted. Grab that one, grab that one. All right, so then we hold on. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, now we're gonna take pink, light pink that is, of all the pinks. Put light pink over here. Make sure that there is no Thing is, again, I mean, like, if you don't really care how the back of your embroidery looks, you can do whatever you want. But personally, I really care if the back of my embroidery looks terrible. Not everybody does, but I do. Okay, well, well so we'll see. So this pink, as we see, is going into the middle. See, I feel like I'm starting to already drift slightly. But let's just let's just stay with it and see what happens. Let's let's commit. Commit to the process. All right, so we know that the V of the red is in the middle here, right? That's where these design lines are both helpful and also you have to kind of keep track of what is there and why they're there. Okay. Yes. Yes, okay, I think that's right. Do I sound confident? I sure hope so. It's kind of big, but... Again, this is just a test. And part of what this helps with, and this red is gonna go here, is it helps with 
practice, obviously, but it also helps with figuring out what to avoid next time. I feel like that stitch is pretty dang big, but let, you know what? Here's what I think I did. No, no, we're in the middle. I didn't have them on a design line. Okay, that's fine. So then here, as you can see, the stitch is impossible. Okay, red, boom. Now well, that's looking weird, but you know, it's fine. It's just a test. I'm gonna see how it looks. Okay, red comes back. Okay, next one I need is light pink, which is in the needle right now. So, light pink comes up here. It's gonna go into the middle here. Okay, uh, now I have so medium pink, not light pink. And then light pink, oh dear, enters, enters the arena. Okay, good, I think that's good. We take those two needles, we hold on for dear life. See, cause this needle here, the reason I do it this way is this needle allows you to keep the tension on that V, which you really absolutely must have. There we go, eh, you know, whatever, it's fine. Okay, so we're gonna come at a 90 degree angle cause that's what I did up there. And then we go back to our medium pink and we're gonna do, I guess, one more stitch and then I'm gonna put it on time-lapse because I'm sure you're sick of hearing me bloviate. Okay, come on now, I gotta find the right thing to grab. It doesn't grab the things I don't wanna grab. Okay, yes, here comes this. All right, so that's that. All right, and then that kind of gets tightened up, I guess, like that. Okay, and then I will show you, let me kind of put my needles into a reasonable spot. I will show you, before I put it on time lapse, what the back should look like. So the back, come on now, frame, should look something like this. It doesn't look gorgeous. So these long, Tails here are where I came from the knot. Wait, I'm probably not even showing you. There we go. These long tails here are where I came, I buried the knot. I'm gonna snip those. And then when we're all done, I'm gonna tie those off. Now, like I say, it doesn't look perfect. On this, it does not look perfect either, but it certainly looks better than a whole messy tangle that nobody needs to see. Uh, and by the way, I tell you, my back, my backs are not 100% perfect. They're they're somewhat reasonably perfect. They're actually not. They're unreasonably unperfect. So what I will do with some of these places where you know I didn't see little loops and things is you know I'll go back, maybe put a little something on there. Sometimes I'll use a magnet attack or something if if I'm really worried. But for the most part, these kind of things, if you put a backing on this, um, it's not going to be a problem. But that's that's the way I feel about it. We'll see, we turn you back around. Oh, come on now, you. Let's go. Okay, that is the impossible stitch. As I said, not that impossible. Only marginally impossible. I tell you what, here's what the impossible thing is. We'll see how this works out. You'll see in the time lapse how this works. I'll put this under the Osmo. Here's where I had problems. So I'm going around, everything's fine and dandy, and then you get to the end. Look at this, y'all. They do not meet up, do they? So I've got to avoid that on this particular instance, on this instantiation. That is why I do samples and uh, tests and practices, because it tells you, excuse me, because it tells you what could go wrong, what will go wrong, and what you need to watch out for. Anyway, I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna put Osmo on time lapse. I'm gonna get stitching. Okay, I'm done.
Lord, Lord, Lord. All right, so. I got the impossible stitch done. I don't think I ended it. I don't think the end is quite the way I want it to be. So, again, this is why we do tests, ladies and gentlemen, to figure out where our problems lie and what we need to fix next time around. The next thing you will see, if all goes according to plan, is a time lapse of me finishing the stitching on this magnificent test piece. Stay tuned. I'm going to try this again, GoPro. What's wrong with you? Why are you not getting sound? Thank you. Bye. Okay, now I've got my Bluetooth headphones off. <laughs> Hi, GoPro. You little so-and-so. Well, it is now uh, 9.07. I've spent... Oh, at least 45 minutes trying to figure out why you won't record sound, you stupid little jerk. Anyway. I, I recorded three insightful and incisive monologues about where I'm at. And you, you, you GoPro, you just, just decided something was wrong. Something, something was not going to work. Something was just not right. Okay, anyway. Um, it's coming along. I've drunk my beers. Now I'm absolutely infuriated because of the GoPro. This, this, was, this is exactly the way it was back in the day when I was doing my, salt, my uh, Dash Assault videos. GoPro. Always the GoPro. It was always the GoPro. Always. The, the, the ever-loving, the, the expensive, the, the, the top-of-the-line GoPro. Osmo over here 
community college kid, freaking top of his class, studying pottery, and you, Mr. MBA, always skipping class, screwing up, running out of battery. God, I hate you. I, I, I literally hate you, GoPro. I literally hate you. I mean, like you're supposed to be the best and you always, 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 always let me down. Anyway, I, I gotta let this go. I gotta let this anger and hatred go. You're poisoning me, GoPro. You're poisoning me with your with your insufficiency. So anyway, project is going well. I'm gonna keep stitching. I'm gonna use the Osmo because the Osmo is the only one I can count on. I can't count on you. I can freestyle all night. Brilliant observations about my process, my creative process. Will you capture any of it, GoPro? No, you will not. You will fail every single time. Ugh. Maybe I should just go to bed because I'm, I'm, I'm a little tired, but. So what I had said the previous two or three times that you failed to capture the audio, thank you, was I have come up with a color scheme, which I personally, I, 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 I see where I'm going with it. I'm not sure everyone will. I think I may find some cr critics of my vision, but you know, eh, that's, that's, that's the point of vision is it's yours and maybe not everyone will get it. So, um, anyway, uh, chartreuse, teal, red, pink, I guess. Um, yeah, I'll make it all come together somehow. So I guess I will keep stitching for a while. Put the Osmo back on. Because my, my hope is I would like to have this done by tomorrow so that I can move on with my life and move on with this project. Anyway. Oh, you have just so infuriated me. Why do you have to, why do you have to be that? Why do you have to do that? What did I ever do to you? I never did anything to you, GoPro. Like I paid money for you. I paid money for you. I, I welcomed you. I invited you into my life. Like I, I wanted you here. I wanted you to join the team. I wanted you on my team, GoPro. Do you not see that? Do you not recognize that? I don't get you. I do not get you. And I swear to God, I swear to God, if I pop open this recording and there is no sound for some completely unknown reason, I, I don't think I can be held accountable for what ensues. I don't think it will be pretty. I think it will be quite ugly. I'm I I'm not threatening you, GoPro. I'm I mean, I maybe I'm threatening you a little. I think you I think you have earned it. I think you know that you've earned it. So Oh god. Oh, why do you have to Oh, okay. Oh, I'm done. Thank you. I'm going to keep stitching. Um and then I will probably go to sleep. Um because I'm several rain years in and I've been sewing for a long time and it's Sunday night and uh, Sunday is supposed to be a night of rest and, and peace and tranquility, which you have spoiled, GoPro. Thank you. Good night. All right, it's Monday. Okay, I need a new battery for you. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life for me.
and I'm feeling good. It is 6.50 a.m. After last night's meltdown, I went to bed. I was so mad at GoPro. I'm sorry, GoPro. I have to apologize to you. I, I created a hostile work environment for you. And I sincerely apologize to you, GoPro. All right, so <clears throat> plan of attack. Today's Monday. And we're going to finish the stitching. There's not that much left to do, and I know exactly what I'm going to do now. It's just oof, Monday. I'm full of Monday energy, Monday vibe. Once the stitching's done, then we're going to take it out of the frame. We're going to soak off the stabilizer, and we're going to see how it looks. And then we'll be done for this week. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm ready to go. Don't drink and stitch, friends. That's the lesson. I'm not hungover, but... It is 11.24 a.m., so it's getting to be lunchtime. I've been stitching since 6 a.m. So here's what I'm going to do now. I was, my, my plan was to finish the stitching and then move on to the next step. But I have got to get up and move because I've been hunched over my needle and my frame for four plus hours. And I cannot sit and sew anymore. I still have some finishing touches but we're getting pretty close. Here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to clean this place up because it is not just a scandal. It's absolutely filthy. Osmo, you're getting a little break. You've been a little champ. You, Osmo, I'm so, I love you so much. See, I love you. GoPro, you know we've had words. I, we're back on a good footing, you and me, but I'm just saying, most valuable player right here. MVP. Okay, done. Clean up, 
get some lunch, get a shower, and then onward. Okay, here we go. Boom, stop you. Finished cleaning up, took a shower, had a little lunch. It's a busy day here at Shea Salt. I got these guys outside my window. I'm like a real YouTuber. I got people doing construction outside my window. A, they're getting uncomfortably close to my motorcycle. B, they're upsetting things in my garden. They touch one hair on my peonies. I'm gonna be held to pay. Whew. All right, I have a, just a bit more stitching to do. And once I get that done, I'm watching you guys. I'm gonna open my, my shades and watch you. Though then they watch me too. I'm not sure I want that. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, I got a little more stitching to do. I'm gonna do that. And then we're gonna get this thing finished up. For this video. What are you doing out there? Well, I really want a nap. I'm tired. I'm tired now. I gotta finish my stitching. I don't have that much to do. Okay. Yes. Don't fucking touch my peonies, dude. Okay. Now, I have the Osmo connected. And it's using Bluetooth, so GoPro, you better not screw with me. I should probably test, but I can't. Okay, whatever. We'll see if this works. You shouldn't have to have Bluetooth in order to function, GoPro. That's just the way life should be. Oh, they're going. Okay, anyway, I finished. I finished the stitching anyway. And now I'm tired. I'm ready for a nap. But I have a plan for that. It includes a nap. Um, so there are a lot of things I would do differently. I mean, there's more I would do. There's more I could do. A lot of things I would do differently. A lot of things that I'm not as happy with as I could be. For example, on all of these guys, I ran the stem stitch under the red. I decided I liked that better. But on this one, I ran it over the red. Eh, you know, I thought I could go back and fix that. And then I thought, you know, it's a test. It is a test. I feel like there might need to be something along here. You know what? Maybe I'll do like what some of the some of the YouTubers use, like a pointer thing. I like that instead of my big fat finger. Oh, don't drop it. So I feel like there should be something. You know what? I'm gonna do a pointer. I'm gonna do a real pointer. I'm a pointy pointer. Here, I'll use this. I like this thing. It's sharp. It's sharp as heck. I feel like there should be some design motif along here something but i don't know what and also i thought once i rinse out the waterproof stabilizer i might like the way the blue and the black look against each other so let's see let's test it um what else so this whole motif in the center the impossible stitch uh the problem we came up against is a couple things number one i didn't end it quite correctly so i have two red stitches really super close together with the beads on the end don't love it and then up here, the red, I started it, I nested it right inside of this stem stitch. And I, was, I pondered it and I thought, well, I could put a bead on top of it. Maybe I still should because it looks kind of weird without it. But then I thought because there's kind of a gap over here, visually, it seems like it kind of goes together. I don't know. Um, yeah, what else? My beading... It's got a few little issues. I'd be, I'd probably do it more carefully. Um, these guys here, these little, um, what are they called? Bullhead stitches or something like that. I don't remember what they're called. I got, I got to get better at this. I was trying when I first started to really count so that there was an exactly even amount in each one. And then I realized that was a fool's errand and I just did whatever looked good. So I think it looks better that way. 
And yeah, I think, I think I'm pretty happy overall with the test. Next, I'm going to take this off frame. I'm going to very carefully with my seam rippers, take off the um, muslin and the um, binding bias tape or whatever it's called, twill tape. Carefully do that. Then I'm going to fill up the sink with water. And you know what I'm, I'm going to do? I'm going to put it on time lapse so you can watch it soak. How's that for great? I, I know, I, I think if you've been watching this video up to this point, you, you know that I like time lapses. I think they're really neat. Especially because when I was looking at the footage of me doing my stitching on time lapse, it makes me look so much more speedy and competent than I actually am. The time lapse like eradicates all the little dumb mistakes and all the little fusses. It just makes it look like you're actually. Oh, man, you cannot imagine how satisfying and gratifying that is for someone like me. So, just to let you know, if you keep watching, you're going to see a lot of time lapse. So, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to get this into the sink, put it on time lapse, probably give it. Oh, I gotta get some Centropol out. That's the stuff you use. It's a special kind of soap that I use when I do silk painting. And it um, is good for rinsing silks. And so this should work for that. I'll put a little Centropol in here, just to kind of, I don't know, why not? And um, I'll let it sit in warm water for, how long we say an hour? Because that's about the length of time that I would like to take a nap. See, told you I had a plan. And thank God the construction dudes are gone. I'm gonna have to go out there and see if they messed anything up. I know they knocked over my goddess statue. My Quan Yin, the goddess of mercy. May she have mercy on their souls. All right, that's enough of that. The sooner I get this off the frame and into the sink, the sooner I get to open it. Alright, I'm gonna stop this. Okay, and so at this point, I'm gonna actually talk and um, this is me doing a voiceover. I can't watch myself. Um, this is weird. I can hear myself. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I wonder if I can turn down the monitor. Because it's like an echo in my ear. How about that? Okay, that's way better. Okay, so anyway, here I am uh, with no audio because, see, I turned off the Osmo. And the only thing that was capturing the audio was the Osmo. And, um, <clears throat> um, so I was sitting here haranguing GoPro and you need the GoPro. But he still wasn't capturing audio. It's like an abusive boyfriend. I hate him. Okay, let's stop. Here, let's do this thing. Let's see, I dug out the Synthropol. Here it is, Synthropol. I use Synthropol when I do silk painting, which I am going to do on this channel at some point. Welcome to my sink. Oh wait, are you on, are you are on hyperlapse, right? Oh no, I think I still have you on video, don't I? Dang it, I still have you on video. I could speed it up, but. All right, here it goes, you guys. Very exciting. It's going in. Okay, you're on hyperlapse, you're on 30X, and now you're hyperlapsing. Engage warp drive, Mr. Sulu. Ooh, there's something. Piece of schmutz. All those bubbles will clear away, and you'll just see the glory, hopefully, of uh, of this uh, waterproof stable waterproof water soluble stab stabilizer as it magically disappears. I need to put a duck in there. Let's see. I'm gonna put this duck in there. You guys don't float. What the hell is wrong with you? Like your ducks. Well. You're the worst ducks I've ever seen. Ooh, this is actually legitimately... Get this duck out of here. This duck is being an asshole. Legitimately thrilling. I'm actually watching it myself in real time. We're going to let that baby soak. And let the Osmo hyperlapse it. Gripping video is currently being made. Now I can go have a nap. Osmo, you just keep hyperlapsing, baby. Keep hyperlapsing for me. Taking a nap now. 
All right, I've had enough waiting. I was gonna like let it soak so that all the bubbles would go away and do a hyperlapse, but I'm I'm bored. All right, let's have let's do some gentle agitation here. Get these stupid ducks out of here. Do any of you float? Okay, so we're doing some gentle agitation. I think this is a success. I do not see or feel any kind of schmutz. So let's let the water out. The backing looks good. Probably could have been, I should have basted it around the edges. Well, I did baste it around the edges and then I took the basting stitches out. That's no biggie. Okay, I don't see, I was slightly worried that there might be some um, bleed from the black pen that I used. There does not seem to be. Here, let's let you slightly drain, if you would, please, quickly. Let's go. And then I want to rinse. This is a very slow drain. Need hyperlapse for the drain. All right, let's get some cold water here. Put it on a spray. Maybe. Okay, or not. There you go. Lay you flat. This is the way they wash kimonos in Japan. In a sink. With a very weak faucet. No, they do. They, they rinse kimonos in running cold water. When Nora and I were in Japan, we saw kimonos in the river. Okay. All right, Silk, let's see. Well, I would say, overall, do we like the color palette? Okay, water, go away, thank you. It's still wet, of course. I like the color palette a lot with the black. Now it'll look better when I press it or flatten it. So I'm going to get is that a little schmutzy. That is some schmutzy left over. Let's see if we can get rid of that. Go away, schmutzy. Because one thing I have heard about the wash and dry, or the wash and go, or the wash and whatever, is that if you don't get rid of it entirely, it can cause problems if you try to iron it. We don't want any any untoward effects. Okay. I am not seeing any color bleed. Not seeing any more schmatzy. All right, I'm gonna go get a towel. We're gonna. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay. We are gonna go and put this on a towel so that it can gently dry. I can't touch you with wet hands, GoPro. So just stay where you're at, please. I'll be right back. All right, guys. Osmo, you've done a hell of a job, my friend. You are the best. I'm going to stop you. GoPro, you're going to get stopped, and then we'll talk in a minute. It is now drying on a towel. I actually pulled out my bag of silk. This is all the silk I use for silk painting, and I have a lot of very nice linens for embroidery. And I have some beautiful silk that I got in Thailand. And I have a whole big bundle of silk fabric from Japan. When I was in Japan, I got a bunch of silk. Now, why am I mentioning all this, you might ask? Well, because I would like to be able to finish this to some level. So I was thinking some of this Japanese fabric, if I could find something in a very similar color scheme, I could do maybe some borders, which would be lovely. I do not think I will get that done for this video, however. I will probably use, continue to use some of these similar stitches on the final um, project, which is up on the wall. There it is, hung officially with painter's tape to keep it out of the way. Um, so yeah, very successful week. I feel very successful. Uh, in the next video, we'll move on to getting started on the bigger project. I think this is successful enough that I can start actually uh, 
probably doing the tracing on the on the water soluble stabilizer get it onto the big pieces of silk and then i'm gonna have to get out my big huge quilting frame well not mine my mom's and um which is in storage i have to go get it and that's going to be a whole nother thing to try to figure out how to do video of oh and by the way the ducks please like share and subscribe you'll be glad you did let me know in the comments if you think i should try to sell this or if I should just keep it. It's got flaws, but you know, what in life doesn't? Anyway, market research. You guys are my market research. Small price to pay for all the entertainment I have provided to you over the past course of the eight hours that this video is sure to be. Osmo, I love you, Osmo. GoPro, I'm watching you, got my eye on you. It's Mercury Retrograde, that's fine. Okay, you're done. Thank you, Osmo. Osmo, I love you. Don't tell GoPro. But you and your brother are my favorites. I love you. I would die. I, I'm thinking of getting rid of GoPro. I think he's listening. Wait, he's, he's watching us. Okay, well, be cool, man. Be cool. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Me, I think I. Oh crap, I got trouble. Damn it. Anyway, sorry for all the weirdness. I'll try to make it shorter next time. Um, I got the sound. God damn it. I'll try to make it shorter next time. And thank you for watching. You guys are great. And um, thanks.